So if you go out online to a groove tube site and you're looking at our preamp tubes, you want to make a preamp tube selection, you will pull down uh, a wide choice of preamp tubes. This is one of our full catalogs which you can download on the internet site. You can actually pop on any one of the tubes and get a general description of the tube in that, in that uh, website. One thing, I, the, probably the most common preamp tube, I, I should probably uh, preface that, using our industry, we call it a 12AX7. That's an American name for it. It's also known as an ECC83, and this is a European uh, nomenclature. Uh, and the, the, these, these letters have meanings. Uh, if you're really interested in this detail, it's all in the book, what the letters mean. You can, a dual trial basically means it has two C's and, you know, and E tells us the filament voltage and 83 tells us the mu or the gain factor. But regardless of all that, an ECC83 is a 12AX7 different language. 7025 is an industrial or also a military number. Uh, again, same tube. So uh, these are the 12AX7 numbers in that family and there's even a couple more but these are the predominant ones. So in our catalog you're going to see a 12AX7 uh, let me get that a little better there. 12AX7 C and that's going to mean China that's the origin of that tube. Uh, it's actually one of our best selling and better sounding preamp tubes. It's the new production in China that was started up recently in the last year and a half, two years. There is an R. In fact, there's an R2 and an R3. And these are tubes made in Russia. The, the one that's been in the market the longest was the 12X7R. It's probably one of the least expensive tubes for the manufacturers to buy. And you'll find that most amps are kind of designed around this Russian tube. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a very good uh, execution of the design. If you look in the book which compares your current and your gain and your transconductance specifications, typically all the Russian tubes, and that would be the second and third evolution of these, are anywhere from 80% to 90% of the spec of the original 12x7 over here. In other words, the 12x7 should have 1600 what we call micromuse. It should have 1.2 uh, milliamps of current. And so these would be specifications of a 12x7. So in other words, a Russian tube might have even 1200 down here. It could even have uh, 0.8 milliamps of current instead of 1.2. And that just means it drives the circuit a little different. Still works. Uh, and that's a, there's a wide tolerance in most of the way they design these amplifiers so you can plug in a pretty bad tube and the amp will still work. Uh, you could put bailing wire on your guitar and it'd probably make a sound too. But you want to get a, a string, actually a piece of wire made for a guitar. So um, we have had uh, great success recently. We recently brought out the M12X7M, which is a, uh, a redesign of an old tube, uh, let's call it a retro design where we've gone and re-engineered that to the materials, the design, duplicated it identically. It has a couple features about it we really like uh, that make it very, very linear and good in the circuit. And it actually hits 100% in all these characters. And in fact, it's the only tube out there right now that does. Unfortunately, it's one of the more expensive tubes where the Russians have been built for so long in this way that they've recovered all their tooling costs. It's one of the lower cost tubes. Uh, but regardless, when you're buying a groove tube, you're getting the best Russian tube selected for hum, noise, and gain there is. Microphonic issues, same thing with the Chinese, doesn't matter. Any tube that's made today is in the groove tube catalog. So please don't understand, please don't make the misunderstanding that we make every tube we sell. We certainly don't. There aren't very many choices. There's only four countries. That's Russia, China, Slovakia, and Serbia. People often ask me, uh, how I can make a living for 25 years in the quality control business. Well, just imagine if everything you were quality controlling came from Russia, Serbia, Slovakia, or China. Uh, they're not exactly high on the list of uh, high quality manufacturing companies. You wouldn't want to drive a car from Russia, Serbia, China, or Slovakia. Uh, actually, Slovakian cars have come up a bit since they've joined the EU. I can't say that about Slovakian cars anymore. But at, at the point I'm making is, uh, these are countries, in, especially in an industry that never really catered to the musician, these are certainly countries that never catered to the professional in any of those areas, and nor were they able to with the technical resources they had. Luckily for us, or from the blessings of the Lord for us, 
we've been able to go into these factories and, and make a point to them. And many of these factories have allowed us to uh, improve their production for us by uh, either using our materials, which we import certain materials into certain factories in those four countries, and or use our designs that we suggest. We'll take a tube that they're making that's maybe 85, 90% of the deal, and we'll make it 100, 110% of the deal by adding something to it. We're gonna talk today about tubes where we've actually added something to the party. Uh, with, in the case of preamp tubes, um, the Mullard is new. We had something to do with the Chinese 12X7 that recently came in production. We actually have uh, uh, influenced in, in this tube, but we actually literally created this tube over here, and it's, it is our best seller currently right now, the 12X7 Mullard style. One thing about the Mullard that made it really interesting, remember I told you earlier that you have a cathode and you have a filamentary winding in that cathode and that that can vibrate. You also have a grid and a plate that surrounds all of this and those are held together in the mica. So we have little holes where this comes through and we're going to show you close-ups on mica so you can really get a feel for this. The Mullard actually has a second mica that lives up on top of this first mica whose only function is to create a little spring which is cut out of the mica, and actually it's only cut there. So as that pushes up through the, the first mica, this is the first mica, this is the second mica, the first mica holds the alignment of the components. The top mica's only function is to have a little finger as this thing is, is sitting up here, and I can kind of draw that a little bit if I make my mica shorter, this little mica sits up on this cathode. The cathode pushes up on the mica, and it creates like a spring-loaded effect on that mica. So it's not held rigid, it's held very softly. As that, as that cathode uh, pushes up through the mica, you've got that little mica finger there holding it down, and it's kind of shock-loaded. And because of that, and it's the only preamp tube, by the way, that's made like that, and it's also why it's so expensive to make, because it requires more micas, and believe it or not, the most expensive part in making a tube is the mica. Uh, this is just wound wire or stamped little pieces of metal. The mica is a naturally occurring mineral that we have to slice very thin, then we have to stamp it, and it's rocks. So you can imagine what we're stamping it with has to be very hard and very durable, so it's a very expensive process making an, a mica stamping tool as opposed to steel stamping, which is much softer than mica. At any rate, it has three different micas. It has a bottom mica, a top mica, and then, a, and then what I would call a top hat mica, which has this spring-loading effect on the cathode, and that keeps the tube very linear in its performance. And for years, people treasured the uh, Mullard 12AX7, which actually really wasn't a 12AX7 because it was made in the UK. It was an ECC83. Of course, I told you that's the same number. That's just the way they say it over there. But uh, it is an ECC83 Mullard and uh, was sought after at eBay, people searching them out, knowing that when you plug these into a Fender amp, wow, you know, skyrockets go off. The thing sounded better. Mostly because you were looking at a tube any NOS tube, any tube made in the 50s and 60s, if it didn't meet these specs, it didn't sell, period. Today, we don't have 50 companies competing to make a better 12X7. We got four companies, basically at the tail end of technology, struggling to try and make enough money on the low quantities of sales that we have today for this product, compared to when it was in every radio and every TV set and every car driving down the road. Uh, so we don't have Sylvania and GE and RCA all competing to make a better 12X7 today. We did 25, 30, 40 years ago. I should, I'm dating myself. They basically everybody had gone away pretty much when we started Groove Tubes in 79. There was only one standing, that was GE uh, and Sylvania, which GE went out immediately and then you had Sylvania. And that's, uh, so the point I'm making is today we have four factories that are supplying the industry and they're not really having the same quality because of their background of their, of their countries and so forth and their assets and also that there isn't really a huge uh, competition. Without competition you don't really have excellence. Uh, so at any rate, uh, what we've done is taken a no hold bars absolute approach to redeveloping certain preamp tubes. And So I highly recommend you try the Mullard. All three of the Russians are in our catalog. There's an ECC 83. We use the European number and we call it an S. So that's Slovakia. So the S means Slovakia. Incidentally, when we started doing business with this country, it was Czechoslovakia, 
and it was in the Russian sphere of influence. It was an East Bloc country, so we were actually working with that company. It was called Tesla originally. Today it's called JJ, named after its current owner, John, Jan Yurko. And, and actually, uh, Groove Tubes and myself was a partner of the Tesla factory prior to the split up of Czechoslovakia. And we had a little something to do with the beginning of that tube, though I, I can't say that that's not the same tube you're going to buy in somebody else's catalog. I can say that after it's gone through the Groove Tube selection process, it's the best one out there because we've already thrown away 40 or 50 percent. In fact, in the case of the Slovakian tube, we're lucky if we get 40 percent good. Russian tube, well, we get a much higher rate of good because they're so low in spec, they don't get too microphonic or too gainy. So we can actually get a higher yield out, out of a, a lower producing tube. The Slovakian tubes have more transconductance. They have a good gain factor, so they tend to be a little more microphonic. At any point, each of these tubes, and there are, let's see, there's the, there's the Chinese tube, three Russian tubes, our new Mullard, which just came out, uh, the Slovakian tube, and I think there's one more, which we call a 7025, which is that military number, and normally we use the Y nomenclature on that, and that stands for Yugoslavia, but if anybody has been watching the news, uh, over the last uh, many years, Yugoslavia is no more Yugoslavia. It's now Serbia is the the region of Yugoslavia that produces the tubes from a company called Elektronska Industries. That's an EI tube. This is in other catalogs known as a JJ tube. Most of the Russian tubes are known as Sovtech. That's Soviet technology bit of an oxymoron. Uh, then the C is, oh I'm just kidding, we love the Russians. Um, the C is for China. And so this, the, the suffix of the tube in our catalog gives you a hint to where it comes from. But we can't actually have much influence over the Russian tubes or the Slovakian. We, we buy them pretty much as we get them and then we select them for quality. And, and that's pretty much the preamp catalog. Any of these will work well and this is, uh, the 12X7 has got to be something like 95% of the preamp tubes out there are 12X7s. You'll also see a 12AT7, you'll see a 12AU7. Slight variations, usually the T's and the U's are used as uh, driver sections, not in the preamp stage and therefore not as influential. If you're looking at choices in preamp tubes for this industry, you're talking about 12X7, ECC8025, this is the family, and of course, as we count them in here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options. Just like changing guitars or microphones, every option will change the way your front end sounds on your amplifier.